The former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mohamedou Sanusi, has said Nigeria has never been this divided since the Civil War of 1967 to 1970. He said the country, because of the elections, was now dangerously divided along ethnic and religious lines, adding that it had put the integrity of public institutions in question. Sanusi, in his address, stated that the country now had a challenge of nation building, adding that the economy was now in the doldrums. According to him, beyond defining the kind of leaders the country needs, it also needs to look critically at the process through which the leaders emerge. We're now being joined to discuss this tonight by Abiodun Shoumi, a political analyst. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us on the program. Thank you for having me. I remember in those days when we were growing up, when I was growing up, I don't know about other people, we had a match pass song and we were singing about a particular person who wanted to divide Nigeria. But go on, the man in, at the helm of affairs at that time said Nigeria must be won. So we are now for General Go, and that's how it was. Nigeria must be won. It was the concern of everybody. It has always been that Nigeria does not disintegrate along any lines, whether ethnic, whether religious, whether whatever kinds of lines. But right now, according to Sanusi, the division in Nigeria has become so worrisome that we can compare it to 1967 to 70 when we had the civil war, or even worse than that. What is your comment on this? Uh, yes, um, <laughs> division it, in itself is not really a problem. It's the nature of the division that we have in society. Um, in the first instance, there is no way you can avoid division. Whether you look at it politically, you have to be divided. That's the nature of democracy. And then um, you have um, uh, classes in society, social stratification along class lines. Uh, you have the working class, you have the rich class, you have the middle class. Um, they are part of the divisions existing in any society. But two of the most dangerous form of divisions um, which could threaten the existence of any nation uh, more than the rest is um, uh, that they are uh, religion and um, ethnicity. They are very, very potent weapons which could lead a country into, um, into being divided, badly divided, or the collapse of a country. Um, yes, it is true, class stratification could also lead to uh, revolution, um, which may also threaten either the country or threaten the established order in that very country. But it is not quite as often as and as potent as um, the, the ethnic and religious um, divide in any country. In the last election, we have seen a country badly polarized um, along um, religion and ethnic um, sentiments, uh, which portend some danger for our country. Um, we are at a very serious crisis at a point in time when we really now need to address the issue of Nigeria being a divided nation, and we need to make it a nation, a diverse nation, but united as a country, uh, not necessarily to divide along ethnic lines. What Sanusi remarked home um, actually is about the, the nature and the level of ethnic uh, politicking that characterized the last election. And that can easily be evident um, from what happened in different parts of the country. When you look at the um, almost unbelievable um, one-way voting in the southeast where uh, 97, 98 percent, 92 percent are returned in favor of one candidate, um, uh, and one political party, to the exclusion of others, that none had even 5%. Hello, can you hear me, Mr. Show me. You know, that is ethnic nationality. Okay. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead now. Hello? Yes, we can that hear That the whole ethnic nationality could think along that line. That is very worrisome. That is dangerous. The second aspect of it is the, the, the what happened also in the, particularly in Lagos. We also saw you know ethnic politics you know playing itself out out of anxiety about some other nationality coming to take over Lagos. Of course, that is not helped by the nature of the propaganda that came out you know from 
the, that nationality, that actually fueled that ethnic resentment in Southwest. Whether justified or not, the fact of the matter is, is a very dangerous form of um, uh, uh, politicking in our country. Um, to the extent that there are people from um, certain parts of the country, particularly Southeast, who are very, very apprehensive, you know, um, of their continuous existence in Lagos. Um, whether real or imagined is not the issue, it's about perception. Yeah. Even though there are other ethnic nationalities living in Lagos, but they are not apprehending the same level of fear. So that is, I think, what drove that on the part of Sanusi. But when you look at religion also, the way religion has been employed, um, it is such uh, very shameful that we could descend to that level. I mean, we saw people moving, a presidential candidate moving from one church to another church, almost all churches, um, appealing to sentiments, even though uh, claiming um, he was not um, campaigning uh, on religious ground. But of course, that is not true. The, the perception is clear. It's not about reality. It's also about perception and the body language. And we had all what the pastors and bishops you know, said, uh, drumming up support for one candidate against another. So that has also not helped. We also have the, 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 another angle to it. We saw the religious, the traditional religionists, or how do I call it, the traditional religious worshippers, you know, also, you know, declaring their Oro festival uh, around the period leading to the election or leading to voting, uh, including on the day of voting. That, of course, affected, uh, turn out to some extent, uh, which nobody can uh, dispute in my view. Um, of course, that has also not helped because even though they didn't attach that to uh, politics, but it's clear that the intention um, is to um, influence the voting pattern of people one, and it also evoke a kind of um, religious sentiments in uh, in the southwest, particularly, particularly in Lagos. So. These are the issues which um, are really very troubling about the nature of the division which we have currently. Um, there's nothing wrong with having political division or social division. We've always been having that, but we've learned how to manage those ones. But the ones that can lead to mayhem is either the religious or the ethnic one. You only need to look at um, Rwanda, and then uh, we will understand how Rwanda got to where they are. Um, today, and also we have the same ethnic issue in Somalia. Somalia till today is no has not been able to rebuild the country. It's still bloodshed today, bloodshed tomorrow, because the nature of the problem in um, Somalia is along ethnic clans uh, lines, and that's the problem. So uh, it is uh, Sanusi is right, like many people, to be concerned about the nature and the character and the type of the division which we have in our country today. Because if we look at the political history from 1999, for instance, the Southeast has always been almost like giving block votes to particular parties. When PDP was holding sway, it was almost like all their votes went to PDP, for instance. And, so, so, and then Lagos State, on its own, I'm not too sure it's more like a, an ethnic thing. Well, maybe it is the Yoruba nationality are against the world. Otherwise, if you're talking about people who really are from Lagos State, fighting for Lagos State, a lot of people will argue against that. Because, for instance, the president-elect has held sway in Lagos for a long time, and it is said that he's from Oshun State. We also know another political actor in Lagos State, in the person of James Faleke, who has been contesting governorship elections in Kogi State. We also have Arik Beshola, who is, has been a governor in Oshun State and has a very great say in Lagos politics. Nobody is saying those people are strangers, except they want to say it is Lagos is Yoruba. It doesn't matter whether you're from Lagos or from anywhere else. But some people perceive this, what is happening in Lagos, as it is a particular set of people who belong to a, a sect a political sect in Lagos against the rest of them. Because Yorubas are, all, are also saying a lot of things against what happened in Lagos now. So my concern is what really fueled what happened here? Because these things that, have, that happened here have been happening low-key. But now 
it was so wide. What gave room or what gave rise to this kind of the magnitude of what happened in this political cycle that we just finished and we're hoping that uh, May 29, it will be very complete. So what was the fuel that brought about this division that we are concerned about now? Yes, um, Lagos is a cosmopolitan city. To a large extent, you are quite right um, with the way you've uh, viewed it, that people have been living together um, for, for, for long yeah. and they've been voting um, for a particular party or a particular political tendency um, in Lagos, which is correct. Um, Lagos has always been standing by Ashura Jutinumbu's party. Uh, there is no doubt about that. Um, and a lot of it is um, due to the fact that people could see that, comparatively speaking, uh, Lagos has been doing well uh, more than any other uh, states in the country, to the extent that it's now the fifth largest economy in the world. So the support for the, uh, that political tendency led by Ashura Jutinumbu is actually predicated on the performance of Lagos State in comparison yeah. with the rest of the states in the country. So that put in context, um, we can then understand why um, people across you know, all ethnic lines, um, a majority of them prefer you know, to stand by that political tendency led by Tinubu. Mm -hmm. Now, in relation to this last election, what created the problem is also the nature of the people in Southwest um, uh, um, uh, in comparison with the nature of the people, uh, particularly from the southeast part of um, Nigeria, um, when it was made clear that people, uh, the, the, the south should produce the next uh, governor by all the center governors, it was not zoned to any part of the south. It was not president, zoned to you south, south, president. South or south. So, given that situation, all people from the south some part of Nigeria are entitled, all ethnic nationalities are entitled to contest for it. Yeah. We saw Wiki trying from south-south um, through the PDP. He didn't make it. And we saw Tinubu tried um, through the APC. He made it. We saw um, Obi from southeast tried, you know, through Labour Party, and he made it also. They all got the ticket. But what was in relationship is the failure to recognize or respect the the, the 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 relationship you know in the southwest and what do i mean by that maybe if you allow me to explain a little bit in the southwest you can have in a family the father being a muslim and you have the mother a christian and the son can choose to be a traditionalist when it's festival period they all celebrate all the festivals together it is not a problem at all in south in the southwest at all so having a muslim muslim candidate or a Christian Christian candidate is not, you know, is not something strange. And I can give you examples of that. We, when Awolowo was contesting uh, in 1979, he had them, uh, Philip Umiade from Southeast as his vice presidential candidate. Both of them were Christians. He didn't create any problem at all in the Southwest. When Oyilola, the, the, the former governor of Oshun State, contested, he contested with Irelu Obada. Both of them were Christians in Oshun State, largely Muslim, and they voted for them. Even the current governor of Oshun State, you know, voted, you know, had a, is a Christian with a Christian deputy, and they still voted for them in this same uh, election cycle, you know, in Oshun State. In, as I'm speaking to you today, in the whole of the southern part of Nigeria, there is no state where there is a Muslim governor. In the all of the entire south. So it then becomes a problem for people in the Southwest to understand when the campaign against Tinubu was led by the church, you know, that you can't have a Muslim Muslim ticket. When in reality, this issue of same religion is not a problem in Southwest. Uh, we've had it before with MK Abela and King Gibe. We now had it again with Tinubu, you know, and um, Shetima. So it has never been a problem. But it is, it is a problem for people in the southern, in other, well, particularly in the southeast, because they made a lot of noise around it and campaigned heavily using the church, you know, and we saw Khan, the Christian Association of Nigeria, 
we saw PFN all coming out heavily criticizing it. Uh, let's wrap and that did not go down this. very well with people, with many people in the Southwest. And because of that, that is the basis, you know, for the renewed tension. And is exactly why the traditionalists in Southwest actually had to intervene. Yes, to let's wrap up this, uh, show me. Let's yeah. wrap up, yeah. Yeah. Just your final words, please. Okay. So, uh, so basically, what we need to do is to learn to have to understand each other. We need to jettison, you know, religion and jettison the issue of ethnicity. We are all Nigerians. We are all people created by God. And it's just an accident of geography that I'm born in Lagos or born in Kano or Kaduna or Enugu. So I think we need to learn from what has happened. And we all have to show respect for each other's feelings. Mm. Okay, I do hope that that healing process that um, everybody's uh, asking for now will really begin and lead us to where we want to be. Lagos used to be the dream of Nigeria. What Nigeria could be, you could come from anywhere and be anything so long as you are a Nigerian here in Lagos. And everybody else was hoping that it's going to happen like that in every other state. And a lot of people were agitating for... Uh, state of origin to be removed from all the forms that we feel and all that so that Nigerians become just Nigerians and without saying uh, wherever you're coming from will affect you in any way. But all that, a lot of people fear, has been eroded. We do hope that this consciousness which it has given us to see how if we divide ourselves along ethnicity and religion we're going to be will teach us a lesson enough to make sure that we come back together to unite and build a strong Nigeria. I'd like to thank you, Mr. Abiodun Shomi, for coming on the program and talking with us. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Okay, we've been talking with um, Mr. Abiodun Shomi, a political analyst on the show. Stakeholders are concerned about the unity of Nigeria. We do hope that that unity that we so much desire will put our hands together to make it come about. On behalf of the entire team of Plus Politics, my name is Nyamgul Agaji. Thanks for being there.